we have to notice it, right? No, because I had noticed it for 12 years in professional fishing. I mean, I would, I would fly to Toronto time and they'd pick me up with helicopters. And they would stock, you know, lakes with small lakes, ponds, large ponds, however. You know, with salmon and trout and things like that. So I would be the fly fisherman, expert fly. Then the people would fly it and, you know, they'd build things and then cook for me. And, you know, people ski jumping and accordion player. And all kinds of things, bro. When I walked into the expos, and, and people would look, everyone knew who I was. They always knew who I was. I only have to go someplace once to be remembered. Always, I was down at the, um, in Huntington Beach at the, um, at the Hyatt Regency. <coughs> and um, uh, Peggy Howell, who owns the art gallery down there, every time I talked to her, she said, Oh, Thomas, all the bellmen, everyone's asking, How are you? I was only there for two days. I fucked that whole place up. I mean, they had to pull me out of the fountain naked. I, you know, I had limo show up with every stripper from Huntington Beach and I mean, Long Beach. And, and then all the nurses piled in and I spent $8,000 on clothes that weekend and gave them all the way to the... You know, I mean, I did a lot of crazy fucking things. But I mean, I irritated them with such delight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I was like, hey, how's Thomas doing? When's he coming back? Mm -hmm. You know? It's like, but when I was there, they were like, Jesus Christ. I mean, the security people were like, Thomas, why are you in the fountain? I said, well, I didn't have a quarter, so I decided to go for a dip and wish myself some luck. <laughs> they were like, can you get out of the fountain? And I'm like, no. Nope. Take me as I am. <coughs> as I do with the police, and then getting pulled over last night was really kind of funny, you know. You get pulled over and... If you get pulled over in Lakeway, you are fucked. Right. And, you know. Fucked. Oh, fucked. Fucked. Completely fucked. I mean, they would have cavity strip searched us, tied us to a fucking fence, and left us out there like, you know, that poor kid, Jeremy, whatever his name was. Remember that poor kid that was... Oh, yeah, Jeremy Lynch. Jeremy Lynch. Jeremy Lynch. Jeremy, it wasn't a Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, uh... You're just thinking Lynch. Yeah, right. Uh, did you see the, uh, did you the see video? the video? Did yeah. you see the video of, uh, Slow Boogie with, um... Yeah, with Seaton on the Willie Lynch files? That was, that was actually, um... I thought that that was a bit epic. In some ways, because, I mean, not that it's, you know, so strange... No, that they created a brotherhood through the disparity of the similarity of the Jeremy differences. Lynn. Wait, no, not Jeremy. Jeremy. Jeremy Lynn is that. No, 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 what the? He was a beautiful kid too. And Ryan Holt. Huh? Ryan Holt. You were talking about the poor kid that was tied to the fence that was taken from a bar, and then left to die by the girl. Laramie, something in Laramie, was the city, right? Jamie something in Laramie. Yeah. Laramie is where the black guy was drugged to death uh, behind the pickup truck on the chains. It wasn't Laramie, Texas. That was the black man who was drugged for miles. And remember that? I remember that. What was his name? Did you know they said, um, you know, when they autopsied, you know, the pieces of his body that were picked up on the side of the road, uh, they were saying that, I mean, he was trying to, you know, protect his, himself... You know, or, or, you know, as he was peeling apart from the road for you know, some time. But then they stopped, and he was still alive, and they were perturbed by the fact that he was still alive. So they backed up all over him, and then, you know, drug him some more, and then, you know, left some more pieces behind him. But, um, you know, the, the fact that human beings can be so, can be so immune, you know, to the pain... Even the pain that they're inflicting upon another human being, that they can't even identify it with it, means that society's falling apart in general anyway. You know, because you know, it's like the same thing. I mean, if your child is dissecting animals, <laughs> you know, and killing cats in your neighborhood and stuff like that, then you have a bit of a problem on your hands. We know who that crazy one was. Who was that faggot that was eating all those boyfriends? Joe, Jeffrey Dollar. Yay, we got one name. Remember Thomas, that? tell the rest of the Lakeway. Oh, Lakeway. 
So, yeah, like, like we wouldn't have been cavity searched or anything else, so we pulled over, uh, we get pulled over, and Seton's like, oh, we get pulled over. Oh, shit. Like, well, every fucking cop, like, well, he knows me as well as they do in Austin. Anyway, so, wouldn't you know, the window rolled down, and it was Josh. Hey, hey, Josh, how you doing? Thomas, 57 in the 50s. Well, I'm not driving, give him a warning. We're in a rush, our water burgers are getting a bit cold. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> You know, that was kind of fun. You know, I mean, with the cops, because, I mean, they were delighted. They were so funny when we were outside of, you know, when Christopher was trying to embezzle the money from me for stealing my computer and stuff. I was out there, and I was like, you know what, guys, I think I can solve this whole thing right now. You know, this is sort of um, the fact that um, I didn't accept his advances towards me. You know, because I said I could smell ugly in the dark. And so, even though I'm single for the first time in 25 years... I'd rather be celibate than desperate or have to smell ugly in the dark, so. Yeah. But I told the cops, I said, I'll resolve this right now. I'm going to walk inside and just give him a kiss. I know like, Thomas, don't do that. So, yeah, I'm going to walk in and give him a kiss. No, don't go in and give him a kiss. So all five police cars are like, Thomas, don't. I'm like, that'll solve everything. I'll go in, I'll make out with him, I'll stick my tongue down his throat. I'm like, no, Thomas, don't. You can't do that now because we'll have to arrest you for criminal trespassing. He's like, no, it'll solve everything. Let me blow kisses through the window, see if I can start. He's like, no, Thomas, don't. Then I toss a cigarette under the... If you don't pick up a cigarette, we're going to have to get your ticket for loitering. I said, well, then ask whoever's car it is to back it up. I'm not crawling underneath it to find it. And the cop's like, I would just don't do that again. I'm like, okay, bye. Yeah, but it was a lot of fun, though. Yeah. That was a fun day. Seton, Seton had a ball. <laughs> and he was, like, laughing and, you know. <laughs> Those cops were laughing too, man. Yeah, they were funny. All man. five of them. Oh, uh, all five cop cars, yeah. They were funny. I told them, I told them, so don't ever get divorced. One of them said, I couldn't afford to get divorced even if I wanted to, so. Well, anyways, um, uh, swagger right. What do you think if we go out and spank some parody? <laughs>